right after dipping inside using his outstanding speed and now watch the athletic ability and the awareness to be able to tightrope down the sideline Batesy are you kidding me ringling brothers Barnum and Bailey sign him up wow so going for two Madison County and a big stop trying to push his way in the end zone they won't get it a big big stop Inglewood Florida or Venice Florida anywhere down there near Immokalee is home to isn't it the the ringling Barnum and Bailey Circus, uh, the schools, the circus Yeah, school. Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey. I've been, I've been, fed an elephant. Check it out again. Here you got the inside trap, and he just bounces it outside, sees the daylight, uses his vision, and then Batesy, this is, this is good stuff. I mean, this is uh, good stuff right here. <laughs> Are we seeing two great junior running backs go at it today? Just a junior right there, number 13, Desmond G. Still don't know how the guy stayed in bounds. On the other side of the ball, we've got Edrin James, cousin number one, Javaris James, has done a little bit of damage. But right there, a huge boost for his offense. Looking at another third and long, and he busts that one out 65 yards. Only one yard other than that carrying the football today, so a 66-yard total for ping pong. And, you know, quite a story. Uh, Desmond G. earlier before the Wakulla game, he lost his mother. His mother had been battling an illness for some time, and Tanya Collins passed away, and he played a couple days later against Wakulla. He didn't felt like he didn't want to let his teammates down. He didn't want to let his mom down. Thought that his mom would have wanted them to play. So his thoughts, he's out there playing for his mom here in the state championship game and trying to take it home for her and for Madison County. And look at Aaron Henry running that one back, but tough time for a guy that's just a junior in high school. Exciting times right now. But you gotta think that it's, it's gotta be. He's playing with a heavy heart, yeah. Yes, but that, that, but you're right on, Batesy. I mean, he's playing. I'm sure she's smiling on him right now. And you call a guy ping pong, that means he knows how to bounce out of there and use that athletic ability. He has a 95 yard touchdown run this year. I mean, he's got great speed, gets his team right back in it. And that's what you need in the state championship game when you're down two scores. And Philip Perez and this offense get right back in it as far as the momentum goes. And well, it stays over there on the Madison County side. Number 58, Charles Evans, the senior nose guard, the quick guy knifing through there. This is a guy that's so quick that Coach Weber for Immokalee said that we've had to put a running back in there at nose guard just to kind of simulate the quickness. Yeah, he's uh, awfully good. And this front seven now can settle in a little bit, get into the football game. They've been on their heels early on because of field position. Now the energy and the emotions on Madison County side. Let's see if Immokalee can combat this, come back with some play calling of their own, kind of stem the tie. Maybe Jay the lone back. He'll get the football. Coming across the lead block is Brian Roll. He can't block anybody, and nobody else seems to, as that defense is waiting on baby Jay Javaris James. Yeah, J.D. Brown in the backfield. They tried to draw a play. It's been successful to this point. Why not go back to it? But not this time. Too much penetration from the defensive line. Look at the guys getting up the blocks. That was the, the havoc caused first by Charles Evans, and then the rest of his teammates get there and clean up but good job of Evans is shooting the gap with the rip technique getting up the field nowhere to run so two plays in a row can he make it three a big third and 14 for Philip Perez he hits his guy that's number 21 JDJ Gene but he also got stuck right when he caught the football like number 23 TJ Reddick there on the stop the junior cornerback take a look at this yeah these guys can stick a good catch now right here Thrown a little bit behind him, but he gets stuck by Reddick. Madison County will flat out hit you. <laughs> you got to be careful to that celebration now. Last year, 31 flags in this 2A game. They would have thrown a flag on that one. Threw a lot of flags, anything, anytime they wanted last year. Been a pretty clean game for the most part so far for both of these teams. And now into punt is Renan St. Preux, number eight. Quentin Smith, number 10, deep for the Cowboys. He'll take it in his own 30. He fumbles it. Picks it back up, finds a little hole on his own. Everybody waiting on him, but he just knifes right through him for a few yards. So turning nothing into a little something is number 10. Yeah, I like punt returners that get straight up the field. They don't dance or whatever. Get up there north and south. He makes something out of nothing. And now field position back in Madison County's favor. And we'll see if G can do it once again for the Cowboys. 38-yard punt for Renan St. Preux. The linebacker slash punter on the Madison County side, a 14-yard return. And there's a look at it. Talk about the big swing. The first three drives, and that's 15 yards starting down in your own end. 
The last drive, 66 yards, and the big touchdown finished off by Ping Pong, Desmond G. This quick hitter goes right up the middle and stays right up the middle this time to number 13, and a big chunk of yardage across midfield. You bring up a good point there, too, Bates. You, you say 15 yards and three drives. Okay, you can start three and out a couple times, but you can't when you start on your inside your own 20 and your punters uh, struggling, your kicking game struggling. That's how they've gotten behind the score here at 14 to 6. But now they've got a chance to tie this game up if they can score and get a two point conversion on this series. Second down and about three. There's the Immokalee defense. First points allowed since November 5th. It's been a long time, but they've gotten on the board. They're trying to go for more now on the Madison County side. That's Desmond G. One more time. The little guy's turned into quite a workhorse. Another one, and this one's for, good enough for a first down. I like the, uh, since the touchdown run, they've gone inside, inside, because Immokalee has tremendous team speed. And they've got guys getting up the field. And, uh, and, and whereas Madison County has great team speed, sometimes to offset that speed, you can get guys to run themselves out of, out of the play. So why not run G up the middle, try to attack the middle of that defense. And right now it's working for Madison County. Brian Roll, Wislet Ruzar, Renan St. Prue, the linebacking crew. Here for Immokalee, and this time they're ready a little bit. Turning it a little bit, Fred Johnson, though, and picking up some yards. Hit there in the backfield and kept it grinding for a little gainer. Rodlin Anthony had a chance to make a tackle for loss there, and he dove at the back and missed, and he ends up turning it up for a good run. Good game by Johnson, and that was a play right there. As a coach, defensively, you got the right defense called. You think you got him stopped. The guy doesn't make the tackle. Big play for Madison. Big Roddell and Anthony, six foot five, the senior, 200 pounder, 81 tackles on the year. So a second down and five now for Brian Peacock and his Cowboys. Peacock puts it in the belly of Desmond G and keeps it and runs right behind him and gets past the first down sticks and it'll be another first down. Right now, Madison County's offensive line starting to get control of the game. Early on, they were struggling. If you watch them up front, the big fellas, Stevens and Petty and Brennan, all these guys, look at them moving people out of there. Look at that block inside right there by number 68, Jeff Petty, getting up under the pads of the defender and moving them around. That's good blocking at the point of attack by that offensive front for Madison County. So those seniors who turned it around early in the season for a mockley at one and two, one of them needs to step up like Curtis Clement. They need to stop this guy, Desmond G, and finally dragging him down is a senior in Rodlin Anthony. Anthony, a guy who early in his career, John Weber said he wouldn't hit anybody, but this year he's come up and started laying some licks here and there. That's not a good sign early on. They say, hey, uh, what do you think about Anthony? Well, he won't hit anybody. That's not good <laughs> in the game of football, as you know, Batesy. But uh, he has developed, and he is listed as a safety, but they've used him all day around the line of scrimmage at the outside linebacker spot, kind of a rover spot, let him try to attack this Madison County offense. Trying to take that attack right back as Brian Peacock in this wing tee off. That's second down and seven now, and they don't get the playoff. Flags down on the field. Might have been the guard. Dead ball, false start against the offense. Five yards, repeat second down. You know, in this wing tee offense, the guards don't have to be 6'2", 280 pound guys to be successful. You want guys who can run, Jeff Petty, only 5'9", 225, the junior tried to pull a little bit quick. You pull so much, you're trapping, and tried to get out of there at that left guard spot just a hair too quick, and that cost him five yards. You got some quick linebackers you're trying to get around the edge on and get a piece of. Got to do everything you can to cheat a little bit. That went a little bit too early, though. So second down and 12 for Brian Peacock. A little bit of a mix-up in the background. In the backfield there, in number eight, Renan St. Proof coming from his linebacker spot on the blitz. Wasn't mixed up at all. He knew exactly where he was going, and that's right on the back of number seven, dragging him down for a big loss. Yeah, a promising series going backwards now for Madison County. You start with the penalty, and then they get a missed block on the pressure right there, a miscommunication in the backfield, and now they're really in a difficult situation. Coach Weber's defense is going to keep coming at you all day. These guys just keep coming. They don't stop. Outstanding athletes on that Indian defense and really get up the field and rally to the football. Gene Sim now in the game at the defense tight end spot for Madison County. They try to hit this one up the middle. The same play that Desmond G earlier broke out to the sidelines and broke it all the way down for a 65-yard touchdown run. Nothing doing on this one, though. And Roderick Humphrey, the defensive tackle, will come back in. There's a look at 
that guard pulling and trapping over there on the other side of the line, Brady. Yeah, they'll fold them, they'll trap them, they'll pull them. They all, they've got more calls for guards in the wing T offense for Madison County than they do for receivers. Even for the center, they've got a center that pulls from time to time, not something that you see all the time. And well, another something you don't see all the time is a 230 pound punter. But Roderick Humphrey gets this one off and puts it down there yeah. almost deep enough. Give him some credit now. At least he knows how to uh, angle kick, directional kick. Uh, let's see if he got it inside the 20. That may go down as one of the. Yeah, that one goes on the stats, big fella, inside the 20. I'm going to give that big man all the credit I can because you got to look at it like this. You're asking a defensive lineman to punt for you. So it's not his fault. Yeah, I guess I'll kick for you, coach. So he's stepping up at least to punt a little bit. And then on top of that, how many times has this guy really punted all year long? Madison County's been killing people all year. So they haven't had to ask him to punt. Here he comes in the state championship game. Shanks a few, but now he pins one down deep. And you've got a little bit of momentum going. Defensively, can he and his buddy step up? Guys like Gino Hayes and Bro Broderick Blue back there. Can they step up and stop a mockley one more time? An 18-yard punt for my man Roderick Humphrey. Feeling good in the swamp. We'll be back 14 to 6 in this 2A game. Defensive line for Madison County's taken over. Uh, you look at those big fellas up front and Evans and Travis and Robinson and Brown and all of them up front are really starting to create some pressure and make it, by making it tough to find running room for Mockley. Those big defensive ends and Humphrey and Shannon Robinson, they'll fire them up the field and just dare you to run. High backs now for the Mockley Indians and looks like a, both of them left a little bit early. So going the wrong way, Philip Perez and company. Dead ball, snap and traction. Didn't see offense, five yards, replay, second down. Coach Weber would love to get to the half right now with a 14-6 lead over this outstanding Madison County team, but still almost three minutes to go. So they're gonna need to make a first down. They wanna run this clock out before the half. Philip Perez waited his turn. He didn't even have 20 reps last year. He finally gets in there and he's making it count as a senior. Brian Roll, a tough guy back there behind him and Javaris James, Baby J is the tailback. This one will go to Baby J, and Baby J looked like he was stuffed in the backfield, squirts out for a few, gets back up there past the line of scrimmage before the penalty near the 20-yard line. And he, he looks a little bit like Edge running it. You know, if you didn't tell him, that little shuffle step in the hole, being patient, waiting for something to happen, and that's hard to coach. I mean, yeah, that's really just natural ability, making something out of nothing. Now, even with his helmet off, he looked a lot like Edger and James. Had all the gold in his grill. You see him blinging earlier when the sun was shining bling, down bling. on the sideline. So you're always blinging. He's up top. You got that right. Third down and six. <laughs> what kind of bling? You got Philip Perez trying to convert now. The handoff goes to Javaris James in there. Again at the tailback spot. Check that. That's Wizzlet Rizard, who had the touchdown catch earlier. Number two. The 5'10", 180-pound senior. Madison County doesn't try to burn a timeout. Of course, they've already burned two, I believe. And there you see it right there up in the middle. That's why number 97, Gino Hayes, is being recruited by everybody in the country. Takes on the block with his inside shoulder, gets off it, makes the tackle. That's textbook, isn't it? It, it is. I mean, uh, you know all about that. If you got find a kid who'll stick it up in there and not only take on the block, but also make the tackle, He's special. Right, you don't want to trade one for one. You want to hit him and shed him, and he does just that, and now his guys are going to get it back in their hands offensively. Ping Pong G doesn't want anything to do with this one. He'll take this field position. So, Brian Peacock and the Madison County Cowboy offense will get the ball back and a chance to go at it. Run on St. Pru and company will try to stop him, though. That's a 43-yard punt. Punt by Renan St. Pru. Going to turn it around and play a little bit of linebacker now. He's got a 35.6 yard average, 55 yard long on the season. So here's a look at it. Madison County getting the football today. Punt, punt, punt. Big 65 yarder by Desmond G. And then another punt. What a run. We got to go back and look at that sucker a couple times before this takes over. Number 13 on the sideline. They want him to do it again for Madison County. This one's Fred Johnson, though. And Fred Johnson does some damage, dances his way across the 50-yard line. So the one-two punch working a little bit. Yeah, they don't have much of a passing attack, but if they can run these sweeps, pick up first downs, they will be able to 
stop the clock at least to move the chains. Good move right there. Bouncing outside, getting, getting up north and south. Make the move, make your decision, and then get north and south and make plays. Ryan Brennan, number 54, the right guard, sealing that wall. Brett Johnson and Desmond G back there again, and this one goes to G on the quick hitter. Nice little gain for Desmond G behind that big offensive line. Bobby Hutchinson, the big guy that was here last year, now playing at Clemson, and all juniors up front on that offensive line. Wearing the silver hat, so they'll be back, and you know, just, just like last year, you gotta think they'll come charging back with guys in the backfield behind them, like Fred Johnson and Desmond G, both juniors themselves. They'll have to replace Brian Peacock, though. Second and six now for Peacock as he drops back and lets this one fly. They say he's got Whoa. a hand, and he shows it off a little bit, baby. Fred Johnson all open. Brian Peacock finds him. That one goes to the house for a 45-yard touchdown, Madison County. Like I said, they don't have much of a passing game, but what they do, it is big. And how do you make that mistake in the secondary of Immokalee? Late in the half, you got to just keep everything in front of you. Madison County gets the touchdown and gives them the momentum, momentum and energy going to the half. What a punch to the gut with five seconds left. You got the team, one of the best teams in the state. You got them down. You want to hold them down, but you let Fred Johnson run free for an easy 45-yard touchdown reception. Now they'll try to go for two with Fred Johnson back there. And if he didn't do enough work on the touchdown, they ask him one more time to try to get in for two, but it doesn't work, so it'll stay 14 to 12. So the Immokalee Indians, with five seconds left, you got to think they'll go to the house up two, but still the momentum is on the side of these Madison County Cowboys. He comes out of his wing spot. It's just a straight go route right down the field in the corner. Never picks him up. No safety help. Nothing. Good pitch and catch. Fred Johnson, a little play action, sends him right down the field. A waggle pass. One of the staples of the wing T offense, and Johnson is the beneficiary of a nice touchdown catch. Those are some of the toughest throws to make, too, when you have him that wide open. But a good throw and catch, and Madison County's got to be feeling good about themselves after a disastrous first quarter. And you know, Bates, you look at Madison County this season, you said there haven't been a lot of games. They've dominated the first quarter this year. Up-to-date statistics, 140 points in the first quarter coming in, including playoffs. Third quarter's been their worst quarter. All year, only 39 points. A lot of that because they've had games put away. So this helps them going to the half. Absolutely, a little pep in the step now of Brian Peacock, the quarterback that just threw that pass. This one, got to be careful with this one as it floats around. Madison County, they're going to recover it. The clock has run out, so it doesn't matter. But still, another momentum killer. A little bit of a sloppy play on defense and then on special teams as the Mockley will take this to the house at halftime. And there's some fire over there on the maroon and silver sidelines. And it gets even worse on the Mockley side. Number 33, that's John L. Hughes, the junior backup linebacker holding the back of his leg. Let's hope he's all right. These teams will go into the locker room. Number 44, Tony Strouder. They're picking that one up. And we'll pick up this two-way action. It's been back and forth, high-flying action, all kinds of fun offensively, defensively. You've got some great juniors out there on the field. They're going at it when we come back on Sunshine Network for the second half. We'll have all the action. Clement, the big tight end, chasing the ball down the field for the second score. Now 14-0, they call on their big time playmaker, Madison County, going with Desmond G. Look at the tight bro, Dr. Batesy. He looks almost as athletic as you do going down the sideline. No, you're the running back, Brady Ackerman. So through the air then with five seconds left, and nobody's downfield to cover the receiver. Fred Johnson out of the backfield and into the end zone. Both extra points failed for the Madison County Cowboys, so it puts our halftime score 14 to 12, and there are some of the other numbers. Yeah, you look at the numbers, total yards in favor of Madison County. Field position been against them most of the first quarter, an even football game, 25 plays for Madison County, 21 for Immokalee. We've got two quarters left to decide this very competitive state championship game. Madison County trying to finish it off this, this year. Last year, they couldn't even get started against Chaminade. They're back for more. They're in the locker room and down two to those guys right now, the Immokalee Indians. They're gonna come out swinging in the second half. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back on Sunshine. Stickers on those helmets. A lot of plays to be played all the way through the playoffs and all the way to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium for the state championship game in two way. James Bates, Brady Ackerman, and the whole Sunshine Network crew welcoming you back. Look at those jerseys, the white uh, uh, Mockley Indians and 
the maroon, the red and silver of the Madison County Cowboys. This one doesn't start off the way the Immokalee Indians would have liked. Goes back between the legs of Wizzlet Rosard, and so it must be that end of the field, the north end zone, and offenses have had their backs to it so far today to start off with, Brady. Yeah, very similar starting position for Immokalee that Madison County had coming out of that north end zone, Batesy, in the first quarter. We'll see if they can navigate it a little bit better than Madison County did, but that's the emotion going in with the score right before the half, the big touchdown pass. They come out, Immokalee lets the kick go through their legs, and Madison County covers them up. So it did carry over. We asked and wondered if it would go in at halftime and come out. And one thing to point out, John L. Hughes, the backup linebacker for the Immokalee Indians, he was on the turf as Time we out. left the game. On the deep end. So Madison County, that's the second questionable timeout they've had to call. Brian Peacock smacking his hands together. He's a little bit upset out there. The senior leader at safety also plays quarterback. But number 33, John L. Hughes was laying on about midfield after the, the final kickoff of the half, and um, he's left the game. They carried him off a hip injury, so our thoughts with John L. Hughes, the junior linebacker. Let's take one more look at it before the half, the last play of the half, which was kind of funky on the side of Immokalee as it was. Here you see his right leg get buckled under there. Right there. And, uh, you know, it's a hip injury reported, and uh, like you said, Batesy, hopefully he will be okay. It's a big load coming down and covering those kicks. Big Geno Hayes, the linebacker for Madison County, number 97, 6'2", 215-pound senior, the leading tackler this year and last year as a junior. And now he and his Madison County defensive mates are licking their chops as they've got the Immokalee Indians and Philip Perez, the senior quarterback, backed up to their own goal line to start this second half. Brian Roll and Baby J. Javaris James the split back behind Perez. They'll give him some protection. Puts the ball up there. Got a guy coming underneath his man. Number eight, Renan St. Pru, the senior linebacker and wide receiver on this play. Obviously, he comes underneath. Good coverage, but he just adjusts to the football. What about the guts calling it off the goal line there for Coach Weber going with the pass and watch St. Pru adjust to the football. Watch him adjust to the football. He's gonna run a straight go route. And as he gets on the outside shoulder, he sees the football, gets back inside, makes the big play, and they're back out towards the middle of the field with a little bit of breathing room. Big time play right there for Mockley. So the difference with the Cowboys and the Indians is, well, baby Jay for now, he makes a big run across the 50 yard line, but there's a flag on the play. The Cowboys started earlier in this game in the first quarter. They had their backs. This is a hold that'll come back the other way against the Indians. But at the beginning of the game in the first quarter, the Cowboys started down there and they couldn't do anything. They come out slinging on the other side of the ball and Philip Perez puts it up there. The second play from scrimmage though, goes the wrong way if you're wearing an Indian hat. The coordinators for Immokalee, Israel Gallegos and Lamar Gallegos. Holding offensively and defensively. against the offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. That's a gutsy call off the goal line, gets him out there, but now a holding penalty if the momentum was going their way. And uh, certainly, if you're a Mockley, you got to stay within yourself, but already this is a win in this series considering where it started. Izzy Gallegos, offensive coordinator, and his brother John over there, or the cousin John. Lamar is, is the brother. Izzy and Lamar are brothers. Three guys on the coaching staff, the Gallegos family. So Philip Perez will drop back to throw this one more time. And Couple guy takes a big shot. Had a guy over there for a while and takes a big lick, and he's still down there back about the seven yard line is finally helped up by baby J. But boy, did he ever take a shot from the defensive end, Shannon Robinson. Yeah, Robinson's gonna get a lick and Price is trying to move around and find something, make something happen. He makes a guy miss, allowing his receiver to get open. But right as he throws it, well within the rules, big time shot right there for number 58, Charles Evans. Shannon Robinson had the initial pressure, couldn't get to him and bring him down. It was Charles Evans. That quick nose guard getting back there. So, second and long now, second down and 19 to be exact. For the Indian offense. Baby J behind that big offensive line, nothing doing. Madison County defense there waiting on him. Darius Travis in there, the senior, 80 tackles this year, 25 of those for loss. And how about that guy, Gino Hayes? You know he's gonna stick his nose in on it. 
And this game's been the opposite of the way I thought it would go as far as scoring. You look at Madison County, they've kind of big played Immokalee, and I thought coming into the game that would be Immokalee's chance to win this game was to big play Madison County's defense because they're so stingy, it's hard to get, it's hard to drive the football on this defense. Well, join the club. Everybody's having a hard time figuring out the Immokalee Indians, and right now they've almost got them figured out, but they try to run the screen pass over to Brian Rowley. Fumbles it away. It'll go out of bounds. It won't be a first down, so... The Madison County defense on that play in that series anyway finally figure them out. But a team that started one and two last week, they beat Chaminade. They just marched right through the playoffs, 112 to zero. They've outscored their playoff opponents. But a big stop defensively for J.D. Brown in the Madison County Cowboy defense. So for the first time in the second half, you'll see number 13 back there. Desmond Ping Pong G had the big 65 yard touchdown run. To put Madison County on the scoreboard to begin with, and Renan St. Preux, number eight, will try to kick this one away. He'll take this one about his own 29. Puts on a little dance, shakes a little bit before the vice angles come down, and coming down on the football field is the football. And um, the Immokalee Indians down there waiting around it. They'll pick it up. No signal yet. Immokalee Indians are going to take this football, and it's back in the hands of Immokalee High School. So Desmond G, the huge play earlier, and now a huge play going the other way for Immokalee as they get the momentum back. St. Farouk recovered it. I've never seen so many guys try to pick up a ball and run with it instead of just falling on it. Let's take a look at it. G makes something happen. Watch it. He breaks outside. Now he's going to get back up the field. Let's see where it pops out. Just strip it out of there. On his way down before the whistle blows. Mockley able to strip it out. A big mistake right there for G in Madison County. Now the Indians have good field position. Curtis Clement stripped that ball away. He scored the touchdown earlier. Baby J has been held out of the end zone so far today. Had a big week two weeks ago against Chaminade. Dances his way up near that first down stick. Curtis Clement scored the touchdown earlier on a fumble. Caused the fumble here. And how about the punter? Run on St. Preux. That's what you get when you get that added dimension from a punter. He punts it away. Goes down, covers his own punt. Not only gets in on the tackle, it picks up football to boot gives it back to his offense as far as James tough running but that's the most effective running play today for a Mockley is that draw play allowing that speed and that pressure of Madison County to get up the field Eliza Alice the fullback he'll take this one not much there for the junior baby J Javaris James 25 touchdowns on the season 1,605 yards, uh, 25 total touchdowns, 23 rushing touchdowns coming into this game total. Impressive stuff. Kid that runs with so much passion. Talked about his cousin Edrin James playing for the Colts, but last year against Chaminade, they held him to 13 yards. He made him pay this year the 143 in that semifinal win, and it's Baby J that'll turn to the official and call a timeout. Timeout, called by the offense. First one of the half for Immokalee High School. Immokalee High School down there near Alligator Alley, just outside of Naples. And the past 2A champions, there's Hollywood Chaminade. Coach Mike Guandolo here last year. Jacksonville Bulls, they're back this year, but in 3A, taking on Jefferson. Madison County did win it in 2001, and Gulliver Prep, Sean Taylor running around wearing that number one jersey here in the swamp. Ross Proof, North Florida Christian. Good schools. Mm -hmm. And Chiefland right up the road. Good schools. And, you know, you look at uh, what Immokalee's doing, and they, a lot of people didn't expect them to come in here and be able to do this against Madison County, but they're doing it. Uh, they've got tremendous athletes. And when you get to this point in the season where you're playing semifinals and championship football, all these teams are good, and, and mistakes are magnified. And uh, field position becomes very, very important. And, and turnovers become very important. And right now, that's swinging the pendulum towards Immokalee in this third quarter. I, it, this, is a, it, this has got the makings, Batesy, of a really special yeah. game here in the second half. So a third down and short. Got the power backs back there right now. Baby Jay's the tip of it back there in the back, and he's going to come in motion. Perez is going to drop back and try to roll out and find some time to throw this one. Finally gets it off. And good coverage down the field. On that tailback that came out in motion and went down the field by the defensive back. Baby Jay couldn't find anything. Guys like Broderick Blue snuffing it out. So a fourth down and short now. And 
Looks like John Weber's over on his side trying to make another decision to punt it away and pin him back down or to go for it. Roger Clue, another outstanding linebacker. You highlighted him a little bit at the top because we were talking about Geno Hayes so much. He said the other one, he's a good one as well. And Batesy, 16 tackles for loss, four and a half sacks this year. Uh, he's a good, good high school linebacker. And uh, he's going to be a kid who gets a chance to play at the next level. Yep. Illinois State, Carson Newman up there in East Tennessee, and Valdosta State all heavy on him. And heavy in the backfield right now, the power eye. Big play in the third quarter. Broderick Blue, Wislet Ruzard. And Baby J, fourth down and two. Baby J's gonna get across the 30 yard line. Should be enough for a first down behind that power backfield and that big offensive line. Have to wait and see where the spot comes. Ryan Roll never got out of his stance at fullback, so he made, basically did it all on his own, and he comes up short, Batesy. Wow, didn't make it across that 30 yard line. And the Madison County Cowboys, a huge stop in the third quarter. 8.31 left here, 14 to 12, they trail. And Brian Peacock in that Madison County wing T offense getting get another shot to go at it. Let's take a look and see if he gets across that line. Now look at Roll, he never gets out of the backfield. Uh, he becomes a non-factor, he leans, falls on top of one of his players. Wow, so a spot that went in their favor early goes against them right there. And credit Madison County's defense. Both defenses stepping up right now. A defense that held, held Georgia Power Valdosta High School to minus 77 yards rushing in the opening game this season. They went up to Georgia to put on That's a show. False start against the offense. Five yards, repeat first down. You do that in Hyder Baysmore Stadium. That's impressive stuff. The, the late coaches that, that, that were at Valdosta, I mean, that is impressive. Minus 77 yards rushing, and it, it did impress uh, former Apopka head coach Rick Darlington. He said it's the best defense he's ever seen, and that Geno Hayes, number 97, is the best linebacker he's ever seen against Valdosta, not against just some slap team. This is a team that made it to the semifinals and lost two weeks ago in Georgia, and Brian Peacock picking up some yardage. Big quarterback. Well, Immokalee has capitalized on field position and also their defense has played outstanding. They've given up two big plays, a 65-yard run by G, and obviously the touchdown pass right before the half, but they'd have control of this game. So their defense has done a great job with this Madison County offense, just like we thought before the game. Highlighted the defenses, two good defenses, duking it out here in the Class 2A championship. Nine-yard pick up there for Brian Peacock after the penalty, so now it's second down and six. This one goes right here down the middle to Desmond G. And it's not 31 penalties bad, but you know a few of these penalties are starting to add up now for the Madison County Cowboys. You can't have the sloppy play. You get the big stop with your defense, and then you go back five yards to so a nine yard gainer instead of a second down and one. You've got a second down and six, and now it turns into a third down and five. Still can run your offense in Madison County. Cowboys, their senior quarterback, looking to get that state championship. Two junior backs back there. This one's going to go to the junior, Brett Johnson, coming across, and the Indians are waiting on him. So all kinds of white jerseys sitting there in the backfield. Esther Duperard, Wislet Broussard back there as well. Duperard, number 50, is just going to get up the field, in the backfield, and create havoc. Look at the play. Gets off the block, in the backfield. Outstanding play by the defensive lineman, showing the energy and the emotion. Defenses are taking over, Batesy. You gotta love this stuff now. Heck yeah, we knew coming in that we had two high-powered defenses and some offenses. Something had to give. And not just tackling on defense, but trying to get down there on special teams. Madison County. No flags on the plate. J.D. Jean back there takes that one. Makes something work a little bit. The junior cornerback. Can they make it work on offense? They've got good field position one more time. Can the big dogs like Roderick Humphrey get it back in their hands? We'll be right back. Say football finals, and this one's the 2A final, and it's a great one, the Immokalee Indians and the Madison County Cowboys. Last time Immokalee had the ball, things didn't go the way they wanted. Yeah, a lot of pressure from those senior defensive players, 10 of them on that defense for Madison County, and Perez has nowhere to run and nowhere to hide right now. And he drops back on this one, tries to find a guy downfield, can't get it to him. And Coach John Weber, the head coach for Immokalee, he wanted to play last week. In 2A and 2B, they finished their semifinals two weeks ago. 
we take a look at some of the pressure here on Philip Perez, taking another shot here in the third quarter. That one's Charles Evans, the big nose guard. But John Weber, he wanted to play last week. He said, we've been on such a roll. I hate to take the week off. 2A and 2B took the week off last week. They got their semifinals over with. Everyone else finished their semifinals last week. And coming out early, the Immokalee Indians were on a roll. But here in the second half, as you take a look at that package and the pressure that's been on Philip Perez, the roll, the tides have turned a little bit. Baby J trying to turn it back, and he gets nothing. Stuffed right about the sticks, maybe a gain of one. And waiting on him are the big guys, the Broderick Blue, and the rest of the Madison County defense. Geno Hayes in there as well. Great linebacking core. The LOS line of scrimmage is being won by Madison County right now. And uh, Mockley may have to go back up top to try to find a big play in this second half, and really in the second quarter on. The defensive front for Madison County has really dominated the line of scrimmage. So now a third down and eight for Perez. Quick drop, bobbled a little bit. Almost picked off after it was coming down. Renan St. Pru had it in his hands, tried to run too early. <laughs> and one of the defensive guys from Madison County down there doing this. Hayes, they're throwing flags on him for unsportsmanlike penalty, probably for doing push-ups after he drops the interception, which is probably what he does at practice every day, Batesy. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's how you get better and stronger. That's why you're one of the best. Dead ball, huh? unsportsmanlike conduct mm. against the defense, 15 mm. yards, first down. Oh, that hurts. Ah, I don't, I don't know about that, Brady. You know, uh, I guess, you know, he, he, he's bringing the attention on himself there. What happened, ladies and gentlemen? Eugene Hayes, the big linebacker from Madison County, had a chance at a pick there after the ball went off the fingertips of the run on St. Fruit. And just like you said, Brady, sometimes for punishment, the receivers or some of those defensive guys will have to do push-ups. And he was mad at himself. You could see he was mad when he came up. But now he's really hitting himself in the head because he just cost his defense getting off the field. So they're back out there in a fresh set of downs for Philip Perez and the Indians. He pumps, rolls back out, and puts it up there, and I don't think it was very smart, and it wasn't at all. Number eight, Josh Lee, the safety comes over. There were two guys, and Perez just threw it up to throw it up, and playing center field is the safety, so almost like a punt now. Yeah, that was a disaster from the start. It was the pump and go, and he had to delay his throw because of pressure up the field. See, boom, now he wants to let it go, but he had to get pressure up the field, so he took too long to let it go. That allowed the senior, Josh Lee, to, and that ability to come over and make the interception. See, right there, pressure coming from the outside. Number 52 for Madison County, Roger Humphrey, comes in and forces him to move outside. That allows the safety to come over, and the senior makes the interception, stops the Immokalee drive. Philip Perez has done a lot of special things for this Immokalee High School team this year, but he doesn't have eyes in the back of his head, turn his back to the defense, and Josh Lee was waiting on him. Let's see what Brian Peacock can do. Once again, we saw this early in the game, the Madison Cowboys sitting in the shadow of the goalpost here in the swamp. This time, they're at the south end zone. See if they can get it out, and Perez, a little bit upset with himself, getting a pat on the back of his teammates. Anytime you've got the ball in the opponent's scoring position, you got to be smart with the football. And it, it is like a punt, but they got a big break on the on the turnover, and they had an opportunity right there to, or with the penalty, they had a big break, and obviously had an opportunity to go in and score. They don't get it. Let's see if their defense can hold them. They've done it before in this position. Second down and 10 for Brian Peacock. This one will go to Fred Johnson. Everyone on the defense at first.